G'day watchers, the Rolex Explorer 40 is a scam. Stick with me on this video to find out why. So yes guys, today I have none other than the watch from the crown on the green, the five pointed crown on the green. Uh, this is the standard Rolex box these days. Somewhat overwhelming actually, because it's not large, but it is hefty and surprisingly, that's at least a four and a half out of five on the spin, you know, just well balanced enough to spin on my table. So in here is the watch that we're gonna to review today. Uh, just to let you know, uh, Rolex store the stuff up here, you know, not a whole lot in here. Uh, there is, you know, warranty card with uh, service manual. And then the instruction manual, pleasingly, is actually uh, watch specific. You can see this is actually specifically with regards to this watch. It is not rocket science. It is actually fairly basic, but it does tell you about the bracelet, you know, particular to the watch as well. So a nice little touch, very different from Amiga, who give you their multi-caliber manual. Rolex give you uh, a manual specific to the model and they don't have a, I guess a huge range of models so I, I guess that's very reasonable of them to do that uh, just to let you know there's I only had to re remove two links actually for this watch to fit my wrist and uh, my wrist isn't very large particularly but even for me it was only two links. So guys this here is of course the Explorer they call it Explorer 40 millimeter the model number is 2242 Seven zero. That is the reference that many of you, you know, if you're aficionados of the watch world, you, you know, you know that Rolex is six digits, and you would probably also know this reference because it is such a well-known watch. Uh, retails currently seven thousand seven hundred dollars uh, USD. Uh, that is the Rolex retail, and if you can get it at that, uh, you know, Rolex, it's almost a no-brainer, right? Get it. If you really don't like it, you can sell it for profit more likely than any other brand. Uh, and you don't get a discount, right? You don't get to negotiate on Rolex price. So, okay, um, let's get into the movement as I usually do. So this is a uh, caliber 3230 uh, specs down the left of screen here. Uh, the pleasing thing is with their so-called chronology escapement on this uh, new range of calibers, it is a 70 hour reserve, which is very handy because that kind of means you can take it off on the Friday and put it on again on the Monday morning if that's something you do with your watches that will last through the weekend. Uh, it does hack, of course, it does have manual winding. Uh, Rolex superlative rating is plus or minus two seconds per day, and this is definitely running within that at a very pleasing plus one SPD. Okay, moving on to the actual case then, and this is where uh, I guess the, the first of the little problems, little niggles that I have here, the case is actually 38.9 millimeters and I've, I've measured it with calipers and you can talk to anyone who actually owns this watch they will confirm that that is the measurement thing. you know they'll say either 38.9 or 39 Rolex say 40 and I, I don't know how you make this watch 40 there's no, no no real easy way to measure any dimension on this to make it 40 uh, and it boggles the mind it boggles me why they actually lie about that uh, so as you know, it's Oyster Steel, it's 904L, not the th typical 316L. So 904L is definitely more corrosion resistance. That is the, the you know, the, the well-known thing about it, but it is actually somewhat softer. So it is going to be slightly easier to scratch than 316L steel, okay? So, but, but Rolex claims it, it polishes to a better luster and definitely more corrosion resistance, hence the choice. But I think the choice is mainly, of course, due to marketing for them to be able to say they differentiate themselves from almost anything else. Used to be only Rolex, now a couple other brands are using 904L, so they've taken to use the term oyster steel for their particular formulation, as if it you know, really is some magic. Probably isn't. Uh, thickness, 11.6 uh, millimeters, so very, very, nice in a very good proportion i think this watch with a lug to lug distance of 46.5 millimeters between my thumbnails there and uh, a lug width they've chosen for this watch is 21. i reckon you know in my opinion they they could have stuck with 20. Uh, i don't think that 21 really changes the, the whole thing very much and 20 would have really made it much more easier to choose straps for this 
but they've gone for 21. That's, that's what this is. Overall weight with the two links removed is only 135 grams. Substantial, yet very comfortable you know, for me, that type of weight. Finishing wise, you can see straight away a very high polished bezel there. All right, just the, the polish plain blizzle on this Explorer. And you get, don't get a choice of Explorer, right? It, it's a black dial steel with a 40. Yes, you can get, uh, I think, a dual tone with the 36 if you chose to go that model. But this model, you know, it's like Apple. You don't get a choice. This is what we think is the best. We, this is what we think everyone wants. And that's the only one you get, you know, Rolex, uh, you know, being what they are. So moving on to the, the rest of it. Uh, so uh, long brush on the top and follows on to the bracelet, right? Very simple. And then high polish on the side there, both sides, right? High polish curve uh, case side follows on to the side of the bracelet is also on a high uh, polish that you get there. Uh, it's got circular brushing at the bottom of the, the case. And then you got that, you know, just that linear brushing on that plain case bag. Why, why, why? Uh, some people say they let you engrave something, but really, it's it's really just an oddity of Rolex that you're getting this very, very plain case back. Not even with any marking whatsoever, but I guess it's becoming iconic these days. Right, so construction-wise, uh, of course, is an oyster case. You're getting uh, that screw-down oyster, uh, you know, solid oyster case back. You're getting a trip-lock crown, is it? Or twin-lock crown? Anyway, whatever. They're, they're the only brand that claims waterproofness right most brands every other brand i've seen say water resistant rolex is waterproof 100 meters this is what this watch gives you uh, moving on to the dial then right this is gloss black right the, the the main one of the main differentiations from the previous generation the 39 uh, millimeter so they used to be 39 and real 39 i think stepping down to 36 before they decided to bring out this uh, 40, so-called 40 millimeter size. So the first time I think Explorer has two sizes currently in production. Uh, one of the main differentiating factors is the, the previous dial is uh, matte. Uh, this one is black. And the other, the previous dial also had Explorer at the bottom, whereas this one has Explorer at the top. Some people don't think uh, that that's an improvement. In fact, it perhaps imbalances it a bit with a bit more space at the bottom half rather than having a little bit more even distribution. I, I, I think people are right, you know, that probably the Explorer does better at the bottom half there. So gloss black dial, it's got printed details, right? Chapter ring, uh, you know, the, the Explorer and whatnot. Uh, but of course it's got the applied indices, right? Uh, all 12 indices uh, in white gold. Uh, Rolex only do white gold when it's kind of this chrome look. Um, and it's got the classic three, six and nine, very nicely done. Uh, polished white gold Mercedes handset as well. Nothing different from a lot of the other watches. That is just a classic Mercedes handset. And of course, it's got chroma light, which some people think is just a different, you know, slightly different formulation of BGW9. Nobody can confirm that for me, uh, but it does glow blue. It's in all 12 positions and the three hands. And it, in, in this case, it, it is pretty damn well performing. It does last very easy through the night, even when I have not bothered to charge it specifically. I will do a Loom comparison video sometime in the future to see how good or bad this really is. And Loom shot right here, of course, for you guys to see how it glows in the dark. Yes, very, very nice and bright when you first charge it. Okay, moving on then. Above uh, the dial, flat sapphire crystal. Right? The Rolex really uh, almost always just do a flat sapphire. It's got anti-reflective coating. It is just what it is, nothing too extra fancy there. That's all you're getting. Moving on to the bracelet then. So as I said, long brush on the top, polished sides, you know, this is the original Oyster bracelet. So I'm going to say Oyster, Oyster, Oyster. Nobody can tell me not to do it. Some people don't think they can say Oyster with other watches. I, I think it's fine, but this is the real Oyster original stuff. Solid endings, of course. Uh, you know, in once upon a time, they used to be hollow, but you know, nobody's going to do hollow on a Rolex now. Uh, tapers from 21 to 16.5 and just to let you know the class is actually 18.5 millimeters wide it's got that oyster lock there okay so that that little lock there uh, it does also have a, a keeper on top uh, uh, extra security on top there and it feels you know perfect feels perfect and i put the oyster link you know the sorry comfort link right it gives you another five millimeters just you know on the fly adjustment some people really love that I, I think 
I've, I've never really found that useful. You know, maybe if I'm going to wear this over a sleeve, but I've never personally needed to use that. There is a micro adjust inside there. A little bit tricky to go, but um, three points there. But you got to, I think you really got to take it off, you know, unscrew one of these before you kind of use a spring bar to, to move that micro adjust on the inside there. Okay, so that's it. That is the description of the Explorer and snapping it on the wrist, this is how it looks like. And because it's actually 39, not 40, it is an excellent size. Excellent size for me and anybody with a similar size wrist, 17 centimeters. It is pretty much perfect, right? Remember, it's only 11.6 uh, thick, right? 46.5 lug to lug and the Oyster bracelet there. Really very, very, you know, very, very refined. I, I got to say, you know, it is essentially perfection. Okay, so... What can I say? You know, what can I say that hasn't been said? Probably not much. You know, I, I think obviously an extremely refined piece. They're not going to change this very much. You know, very, very minimal tweaks over time, including, you know, stuff like the position of the Explorer on the dial, you know, went to 21 millimeter lugs and, and just slight tweaks on the size and proportions. It is, you know, it's been refined over so long that you're not going to fool around with this watch, you know, that with, with an icon like the Explorer. It is really close to perfection for an everyday utility watch. And this is in the professional range. So, you know, courtesy, I got to say from the start uh, of my mate who, who has lent me this, it, very difficult to get, but you know, if you can get a professional range watch, this is excellent. Uh, the, the, the cheapest one they sell, uh, it's got that 100 meter rating that you can take anywhere just about. And I reckon, in my opinion, a sweet spot for the size. 39 millimeter, given how dominant that dial is, how narrow that bezel is, it's not a dive bezel. Uh, 39 is just about perfect for almost everyone, you know, unless your, your wrist is extra small. Uh, the proportions, right? You know, what are you gonna change here? It, it, it really has been refined to, you know, something that is just perfect. You're not gonna really change the proportions very much ultra high contrast you know very clear dial that's what they they tout this black and you know like white gold there it is very high contrast very easy to read classic 369 numerals right the, the, i prefer that any day than uh, you know the plain sticks of the op or the date just and the bracelet that again you know what are you going to change here this is essentially refined to perfection uh you know it, it, it fits excellently nothing really that i can uh, complain about almost anywhere here truly I, I think this is a go anywhere piece it's just as comfortable underwater you know in the pool in the beach whatever uh, as with wearing a suit even up to black tie i think you know this would suit black tie more so than a submariner i mean strictly speaking yes you shouldn't wear something like this but uh, definitely this will suit more than a submariner you know of all the professional watches this one is truly the most go anywhere, I reckon. Um, you know, any weaknesses? Well, look, I, I think it's hard to hard to really pick out anything here. I, I think it can only be made more perfect if they gave us the glide lock class, which I don't think they're ever going to do, right? That's going to stay on the Submariner and, you know, the deep sea and whatnot. Uh, they're never going to do that. Uh, so, you know, that, that's a bit of a dream, but that would make it even more perfect. And in my opinion, 20 millimeter lugs would make this, you know, you know, just that bit more perfect, right? Yes, uh, I'm not going to change the bracelet uh, Rolex. Most of you probably don't, but if you do, 20 millimeters will make that a damn sight easier to find matching straps. Uh, and and of course, you know it's a Rolex, so you're forever wishing you can buy one of these. You know, you know, uh, all the best if you can, and and all power to you if you manage to buy this at retail. Most of us probably have to get this on the aftermarket with all the problems of trying to make sure it's the real thing. That's that's Rolex. And lastly, you know, the, the thing that I said about the size, why do they mislead us? You know, tell me, tell me, please, you know, Rolex, tell me, why do you tell me it's 40 millimeters when that is a plain uh, falsehood? You know, maybe they don't want to kind of confuse you with the previous 39, but I, I reckon that's not a good enough reason. And it feels, it almost feels like a scam. You know, I think everybody can look up that it's not really a 40, but it almost feels a bit scammy from Rolex. So shame, shame on Rolex for doing that. Uh, and please explain to me if you will deign to comment on my video. So guys, 
there you go, you know, a review of an absolute icon. Let me know what you think, especially if you own something similar to this, one of the previous models or this particular model. Would love to hear your thoughts. I'm sure uh, there's not going to be any shortage on comments on a Rolex. Guys, thank you again for joining me on this video. As always, see you next time.